My name is Joshua Milton. This is the teacher strategy video for class 605. Okay, class. Uh, so for today's lesson, we're going to be talking about range of motion. So when I say range of motion, the range of motion is, if we had to get a book definition, it would be described as the range through which a joint can move. The range through which a joint can move. Quick question. Will everybody have the same range of motion? No. Everybody, everybody won't. Everybody different. There could be a couple reasons why we don't have a uh, range of motion. You may have, um, it may be like me. I had shoulder surgery. My range of motion is about 170, not 180. You could have a genetic, uh, genetic uh, alteration or something that makes your uh, range of motion not be 180. What do we measure range of motion in? We measure in degrees. You hear me say about 170, 165 just then. I was talking about degrees. So we measure range of motion in degrees. It can be performed actively, passively, or active assisted. So, so what is passive? What is active? What is active, active assisted? So got my buddy George here. So it can be performed actively. Actively means I'm just I can move with my arm. I, mean, I, I see my patient. I say, Mr. Uh, Mr. Boudreau, move your arm and flip, uh, uh, straight in front of you. Let's see how, how high you can raise it over your head. Mr. Boudreaux can raise his arm over his head. Good, that's 180 degrees. You don't have to look at that too much. But if uh, Mr. Boudreaux just coming off surgery or something, and I have to, and he can't, he's, he's in a protocol where he can't move his arm by himself yet, we have to do it for him, which would be passive. He's passively, we're, he's passively letting us do it. That's how I think about it. So, when you're doing passive range of motion, patient has to be relaxed. They have to be passive. So that's how I remember it. Passive range of motion, patient has to be passive. So I move it, move it as uh, far as I could without you know hitting that pain threshold. Because uh, because obviously if we're in this uh, phase of rehab, he's probably not going to be able to tolerate a lot of pain, and it's probably not we probably not going to stretch him at that moment. But you have to go back to your physical therapist, see what they say, see what the uh, See what the plan of care is. So just move it as far as you can. Once it gets to that pain threshold, stop and we just work in that area. That's passive. So if we wanted to go active assisted, active assisted, that is kind of a combination of the two. So move it, they will uh, Mr. Boudreaux move his arm as far as he could. Then I take over, try to move it the rest of the way, stretch him out a little bit. Nothing too major, nothing, nothing too, I say painful. But I would try to move it through there. Okay, so let me get two volunteers. And at this point in the lesson, I would uh, kind of coach them through how to do it on each other. Let them, let them have kind of like a group work, group activity work to let them move, move through it. I would correct them if it was wrong. And that would be two teaching strategies in itself. The group work would be co-op learning and the correcting would be uh, just corrective learning. All right, so after that, then it's set back down, we get right back into the, uh, into the lesson. Okay, class, great. So you all practiced on each other a little bit. You should know how, you should know the differences between active, uh, assistive, and, um, I'm sorry, active, passive, and active assistive. So with that being said, Let's jump back a little bit. I said that you measure range of motion in degrees. Well, what would you measure that with? What, what would you measure that with? Measure with what we call a goniometer. A goniometer, I'm sorry. So, you see, I got tools to measure uh, range of motion. You have a lot of different size goniometers. I only put one because that's the main one. So, that one would be for like uh, larger extremities like your arm your back, your hips, knees, ankles, things like that. But they do have a lot more uh, goniometers. You can you see the link right here. Go to that link, it's on YouTube. You can see how to properly use it, how to, uh, what was the differences between them. You have some, very small, you can use for you know finger abduction, things like that. Just go click on that link and that'll take you right to it. So to be able to perform range of motion uh, to the best of our ability, we need to know how the joints move, why they move that way, what's making them move that way. So you need to know your shoulder anatomy. So you need to know the bones, you need to know the musculature. That is very important as a PTA, you need to know the bones and you need to know your anatomy. You gotta know your anatomy and physiology. 
So if we talk about the shoulder, shoulder anatomy is the humerus, the clavicle, and the scapula. So on Mr. Bo on Mr. George Boudreau right here, humerus is that long bone right there. Clavicle would be your collarbone, which is right across your head, right through here. Scapula would be right on your back right here. <clears throat> so we go back to the anatomy. Got your biceps. Everybody know the biceps right here. Biceps is used to flex your elbow. Kind of, it has a part to play in flexing your shoulder as well. Uh, by a triceps, extend, also extends your shoulder. Supraspinatus, kind of, uh, let's see, kind of brings it down into adduction. Subscapularis will abduct, and brachialis will also help with, help with um, a little flexion. Not that much, but it's going to help a little bit. So, with that being said, you need to know your, you need to know the way the muscles pull. So, you know, let's say we, we're trying to find uh, range of motion of the elbow, we're doing the, uh, we're doing flexion. And the patient has, the range of motion stops right here. Let's say he hasn't been to the uh, doctor yet. This is on his first visit. So range of motion stops right here. We should out, we should automatically know that the biceps is the muscle that that contributes to that action. So if we have a, a problem with the flexion of the elbow, we must have a problem with the biceps. So that's the whole thinking. That's the whole thinking behind knowing the, knowing the um, the muscles, knowing what they do. We have to know what they do because if we don't, if we don't know what they do, who will? So we gotta uh, gotta know what they do. Alright, so the um got a typo right here on my uh my PowerPoint it says flexion is 150, that should be 180. Should be 180. So flexion of the shoulder is 180, extension is 50. We all know flexion is going up to uh, about 180 right there, flexion will be back, 150, abduction coming out, adduction coming in. One easy way to remember ab and add. Abduction is coming away from the body. Adduction is coming right back to the body. You add it to the body. Adduction, you spell it A-D-D-U-C-T-I-O-N. You add it back to the body. Okay. So this video right here is just um, some information on passive range of motion. So remember, passive range of motion, we said it is when we move move the uh, extremity through that range of motion. All right. If you click that video right there, it'll show you some more ways of how to do it. You know, just, just different tactics on, different tactics on how to do it. Like I said at the beginning, this is not gonna be a, a lecture about explaining you exactly how to do it, but just the process behind. Okay, so active range of motion, remember, this is uh would be if the patient was doing the movement themselves. So if we're if we have the patient, you see on the PowerPoint, you got shoulder flexion, shoulder extension, abduction. You know, just different different movements to have the patient do. Now let's just say we have two patients one day. Uh, I'll show you a quick trick that you can do. So if Let's just say we got Mr. George Rudrow here. Let's say that he's in a phase of rehab where he can actively move his shoulder through the range of motion, but he still has a little, uh, a little I won't say a catch, but he still can't get to that 180. But he is able to stretch through. So one thing you could do, preferably you have a towel, but I'm gonna use my jacket right here on this whiteboard. You could fold over a towel, let Mr. Boudreaux put it on the, uh, the wall over there, and he could reach up and just stretch out the arms. See, what the towel would do was slide. The towel would slide, and eventually it would just slide Mr. Boudreaux's arm through that range of motion. Now, obviously we need to check with the PT to make sure, you know, there's no structural damage or that he can slide through that range of motion. If we determine that he can slide through that range of motion, we can go ahead, take him through there, He'll, he'll be okay. So, and it's uh, you can do that <clears throat> with abduction, 
I mean, abduction, abduction, you can do it either way. It's just a quick little, um, it's just something to note if you have more than one patient you're working on one, but you need to get Mr. Boudreaux going, you know what I'm saying, to get the time, to get the units, stuff like that. Okay, and we have another video right here to show y'all some different things that. So, then we jump to elbow anatomy. So, the anatomy of the elbow, you have the ulna and the radius. Ulna and the radius, pretty simple. And you have a long list of muscles to the elbow. I'm not going to get into that per se because we should, like I said, we should already know that. Um, second year PTA students, we should already know what's going on with the elbow there. So you guys just review that. Sure to be on the test coming up pretty soon. So elbow range of motion values. Now I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to not really a trick question, but so normal range of motion for the elbow extension is zero. Why would that be? It's because of the, the bony um, the bony anatomy of the elbow. This is another reason why it's important to know the anatomy of, uh, of the, the body part that you're testing. So let's say, so the anatomy of the elbow, the range of motion of the elbow extension is zero because, I mean, you obviously can't go anymore. So if we have a, a situation where we measure, we're measuring the range of motion of the elbow and let's say we have 10, uh, negative 10 degrees, that will let us know that we might have some joint elasticity that we need to, uh, we need to check on. Maybe need to do some, um, some E-stem, something like that, just to kind of uh, strengthen that joint up. So we need to try to get back to that zero. <clears throat> Flexion is 150, pronation, 80, supination is uh, 80. One way that I like to remember pronation and supination, supination is, supination is turning the thumb up. But if you think about it like this, supinating, holding a bowl of soup. I know it's silly, but what I mean by holding a bowl of soup, you can't hold soup like this. But if you hold soup like this, it's just an easy way, just kind of a silly way to remember. But that's supination, that's pronation. Both of them are 80, so it's easy to remember. Again, right here we got some um, elbow passive range of motion techniques. You can see that the therapist is uh, pull, pushing and pulling the, uh, the elbow through that range of motion. We have some eight active um, range of motion, same movements, patients just doing it themselves. And that's it. So, lastly, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go over uh, to the next room. I'm not gonna put y'all in a, a simulation, just a different kind of teacher strategy to see um, that y'all know what actually the range of motion is. It's kind of an all-encompassing thing. So once we get over there, I'm going to make sure that you all, you all, all are going to point out the, um, we're going to be kind of like in a patient simulation. So you're going to have a patient over there, you're going to go over there, and you're going to point out the muscles, what they do. You're going to explain to the patient what they do. Once you do that, then you're going to take the, the uh, patient through active range of motion, passive range of motion, and a little uh, uh, active assistant range of motion based on what they need. So the person over there, they already know, they are, they're going to give you different scenarios. One may be able to move their arm all the way through, others may not. So we're just going to go over there in a, a simulation type of thing to see if you kind of understood what I was talking about of, of why you would do active, why you would do passive, and why you would do um, active assistant. Okay, if they do have an ailment, you're gonna tell me what muscle is um what muscle is causing that ailment. So, like the example I gave in class, if they can't come all the way through the um extension part of elbow uh, right of motion, you need to tell me why. Tell me tell me that their biceps is messed up. It's gonna be a sheet over there, and it's gonna be like I said, just like a, a simulation type deal, just another teacher strategy to let you all kind of practice some stuff. So, once you do that, I'm going to give you some feedback, and we will uh, we'll go from there. So, everybody pack over the list, head over to the left. At that point, I would, as I said, take the students through the simulation. I would allow them to mess up, and I would correct them, give them some feedback, and, you know, just help them out through their process. So, with that being said, that is, uh, that's the end of my, my teacher strategy video.